Hello, this is Noxter, and welcome back to Brewcraft. One thing I mentioned earlier, in the last episode, I said I wanted to get lots of name tags and name things. Um, now, one of the ways you can get name tags renewably is from fishing, which is sucks, because you have to do it a lot, and it's particularly hard. You can't really make an effective auto-fisher if you have a lot of lag, at least I don't think you can. So, the other way to get them renewably, without having to find them, is from villagers and trading. So here are some villagers to trade with. This guy sells them for 22 emeralds, but there's a, one of the guys down there sells them for 20. So I've been collecting some villagers. Um, one of the thing, problems with villagers, though, is you require lots of stuff to sell them, if you want to make enough emeralds to do things with. And librarians, the ones who sell you the name tags, require paper, and some of the other guys require other things. And it's a good idea to have a few different sources, so you can get lots of emeralds. And my inventory is glitching, but paper is one of the important ones. So I've got 36 emeralds here. I'll just take it through with me in case I want to sell them to the guys. I've got some things. Raw chicken is another one. Um, you sell to farmers, and that's pretty good because you can farm that automatically. All right, who's got the best paper trade for me? There's a guy here who has a good one. He's got 25. I think this is the best one. So yes, raw chickens, I, we have a chi chicken machine farm on the server, so I just made a few adjustments so that instead of cooking the chicken, it gives me raw ones, and now I have plenty of raw chickens, and the guy is refusing to take them because he has too many, and I need to find other things to, give him, to make him happy again, and that's a pain. And I've been giving emeralds and getting cooked pork, which is pretty good as a food source. Better than cooked chicken. Although the economy efficiency of automatically farmed versus having to give him automatically farm stuff and then taking the stuff out is you lose out a lot in the process but it works you see this here that's a workbench see this here that's also a workbench why do you need two workbenches so close together obviously you don't yoink so yes I was thinking I wanted to have some villagers around for doing village trading, like I said. Um, and I thought, well, where could I put them? If I put them somewhere in spawn in a public location, that's good. I can share them with everybody. I think that's good. Uh, so I thought, where could I put them? I could find a nice spot, maybe build a thing. And then I thought, if I stick them in the salmon shrine, people will have to give me fish in order to use them. And if it's a thing people want to use, that means I'll get more and more fish, and I could take over the world by having many, many fish. So I've made a spot in there to put them. I have not yet put them in there because of reasons they're a pain to deal with. But I do need to tidy up. Wow, look at all this raw chicken. I actually came to get something else, but I went the wrong way because I was busy talking. Um, yes. But, but getting the villagers there in the first place, I had to go up and find a village. Um, I, I was going to just, you know, find some zombie villagers. And then I didn't find any. Like, I looked for a while at night and couldn't find any, so I'm like, stuff it, I'm just going to a village. And I went a long way to a village and brought them back in minecarts, and on the way I saw, like, at least one, maybe two zombie villages, and it was really annoying and silly. Um, I did record all that, just, just in case anything crazy happened, so I might include a few clips of that, either here or interspersed randomly throughout the episode. We'll see. But yes, that's where I put them. I'm going to have them down in here so that you can come along in here, you can trade. Wow, I've got two name tags up in there at the moment. Lots of name tags. But yes, you can trade with them here. I just, I just, I'll just have a selection of like eight or six, however many spaces, six of the ones I think are best and most wanted. So over here, specifically over there, we have this lovely little reed farm. And you can't jump off this bridge, the railing is too effective. We have this lovely little reed farm, and it does a great job of producing reeds. 
for general purposes, if you just want a few bookshelves to deck out your house, or a book or two, or some sugar for a, whatever the heck you want to use sugar for, I don't know. Because this thing's automatic, even though it's very small, it's automatic. There's a daylight sensor, which means every day and night cycle, it will harvest everything that's in there, which means over time, it's in spawn trunks. I don't think actually the random block updates happen when you're not around, so that won't still happen, but it's the place people are a lot often, so the reeds are growing all the time, and it's great, it keeps filling up. However, if you want to use some kind of operations that use loads and loads of reeds, and especially loads and loads of reeds, or loads and loads and loads and loads of reeds, or lots of reeds on a regular basis, like making fireworks for the death games, or trading paper and things to villagers, this just can't cut it. You need something bigger. So I elected to build something bigger as, as a, you know, for bulk reads, for this is still here for general purposes. And yeah, so I built it somewhere else and it's much, much bigger. So I shall go and show it to you. Well, technically I've already shown it to you because I'm recording this after I've recorded the bit where I showed it to you. But for your perspective, I'm about to go and show it to you now. So this here is the iron farm, which is pretty slow. It's only got the single village design, basic simple one. And in order to get any reasonable amount of iron, you have to AFK here for a very, very long time. Uh, we possibly might be upgrading in the future, but for now that's what it is. And because people spend, especially Apophy, spends a lot of time AFK here, or has so far, hopefully we'll continue that up, I decided this is a good spot to build it. So this is the reed farm. Um, it's about fully grown now, and I've just been rigging up a timer system that will automatically harvest it periodically. Uh, I thought, like the spawn one, we could use daylight sensor, but I don't quite like that, mainly because if... I mean, it's a 20 minute time, which is pretty good, but if you come here or you're sleeping and things, it's not going to do that. So, if I've rigged this up correctly, so I used a hopper timer and then a dropper counter. So the hopper timer is like a full, full, full things. So that goes, and that should click over in just a second. I think. Oh no, it's got another stack to build up. But when that fills up, this will go back and this drop will stick a stick in this hopper. And when all the sticks go in this hopper, it clears out and sh should harvest the farm. So how does the harvesting part work? Well, I've got about, I think, two minutes to explain that. See, there you go, pop. What? Oh, yes, one stick now. Um, yes, I've got about two minutes to explain that, I think. So, basically, this is it. This is a, basically a, a, a simple, fairly simple slime block piston flying machine inchworm drive powered thing that goes all the way up and back and it has these harvesty blades here connected to it which rip up the reeds as it goes along. So I've set it up. Ideally you only need it to go one way each time it harvests. So it will go from that end to this end and then from this end back to that end. But I've got it set up so it goes to this end and this circuit is set up to automatically detect it and send it straight back again. And the reason for that is Otherwise, I'd have to have just a timer at each end, and that's just silly. And then things that set off the collection system. So, I figure there's no need for that. Better off just making it go each way. And I've got it, after it gets back, I've got this thing detects when it gets back. Yeah, let's see how far we've got left to go. Yes, this thing detects when it gets back and sends a pulse down to here, which sends all these hopper mine carts along the track, which goes under the system and picks up all the reeds, or well, most of the reeds. Some of them might pop out onto the sides here, and they usually tend to get swept along by the harvester and end up dropping down here into the hoppers anyway, and at the end they do the same thing onto the tracks that the minecarts are going to go past and collect. So that should pick up everything, with, with the possible exception of one or two that manage to fly into places like this edge here things like that all get left behind by the system but that's pretty minuscule so I'm going to stick a repeater on here four ticks I think extra pulse might be necessary it might not all right so it's gone one way and then we've got 
all the time. Actually, I think it's longer than that, than the two minutes, I think. It counts twice. Now I think about it, maybe not. I'll do maths in my head later. Anyway, so when that fires, this should go up and back. And this is full harvest. I've waited for everything to grow, so we'll just see how epic that is. And after the collection, if all the reeds should end up going down into here. And I've got some other junk in here at the moment. So... And yeah, there's a whole bunch of chests that are just stuck in here. So in a like, you know, basic silo type design. So that there should be no issues with running out of space. And if you do run out of space, you've got more space than you need. Yes, uh, this design uses 16 pistons. There are uh, three on the resetter at that end. There are three on the resetter at this end. And ten in this thing. There's four in the middle, one on each end. And two on each of the side bits. Nine, ten, yes. So a total of 16 pistons, and with a conventional reed farm, and like as we saw back at spawn, that would normally be able to harvest you 16 reed plants. So two reeds each. So 32 reeds per harvest. This, I've got it 64 blocks long. So that's a stack of reeds. And there are eight rows of reeds, so eight stacks from 16 pistons of reeds, and and the, to the two height, if they're fully grown, that yields 16 stacks per harvest. And it just went, and it didn't work. <sighs> Don't you love it when that happens? Okay, I can see one problem right here, is that this feeds back, and that's probably the big problem. So I need to... Yeah, see? See? Yeah! Whoa. Okay, so that's the problem. The problem is my delay thing it has feedback issues. So yes, the harvester just drives along, mows up all the reeds. You can see they, some of them get launched forward by, by the slime blocks as it goes along. But there's blocks at the end to catch them if that happens near the end. see it go all the way along here and then it'll go back so technically some of the reeds will grow again so you might actually get be able to get more than that 16 stacks we said so yep here it comes back again yeah, you can see some reeds caught up on the top but they should get swept down into the place actually I don't know the ones on the middle might not yeah and you can see some of the reeds along the side got picked up the cart goes up and actually no how, how does it work there's four carts and they don't do the obvious thing of going up each row and back each row because I want them to go across the end so they can pick up ones that get dropped down these gaps here. And the minecarts got back, I think, have they? They have. And we've still got some reeds here. I'm not quite sure why. They might have fallen after the minecarts left. So perhaps we need to have a bit of delay before the minecarts got sent off. But anyway, let's have a look. Uh, actually, this is probably still funneling in. Yeah, so we can't we can't have a look just yet. Um, how much we got? But again, that's 64 blocks long. Theoretically, you can build this as long as you like, well, provided it stays in longer chunks. And again, same, just 16 pistons. And you have to run the tracks the whole length, but tracks aren't too expensive compared to pistons. You know, six things gives you 16 tracks instead of one for one. So yes, the tracks at the end, the one on this side swaps with the one on the very end. The one on this side, or that side swaps between there, and this one goes across the middle. So it does a weird loopy thing. But that's just so that reeds that fall down here go get picked up, as opposed to if it just went out and then back. It wouldn't. And the, the, yeah. <laughs> Words. What was I saying? The reason that... Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, now I remember what I was going to say. Uh, the fact that, like, like we were saying, you could build it as long as you like. Obviously, if you build it too long, then harvesting all the reeds, your minecarts are not going to be able to fit at all in them. So, yeah. Now really, there are a lot that didn't get picked up though. That's concerning. Like, 
there should not be that many. It's particularly only on this side that I'm noticing. And yeah, it is all on that side. So that marker and this one share. That piston is not really there. Wow. Ooh. Um, but yeah, I'm noticing a lot. Something weird, which I shall have a look at. But assuming I can fix all the weirdness, and I probably can, let's just imagine it works beautifully. Right. Um, I was down in a cave looking for some gold, and then I wanted to pill it up to the surface. Surface? Surface? So I just dug straight up and pill it up, and I was wondering why it was taking so long. Right at the top of a mountain. That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 stacks and then 10. And then there was that whole row that we didn't collect. So that could be like another... Well, it could be up to two stacks. Um, which would bring it above 16 level. And then there's that little bit that got lost in the middle as well. But all that is from one harvest. I think that's pretty good. Seriously. This thing has been up for ages, saying that, you know, the, the, the field and lakes are claimed. Fair enough, they probably are. Someone had plans. I think that's a Poffy's thing that he's been doing now, and I don't know if he did this or someone else did. The point is, there's two perfectly good workbenches right there. I'm taking them. Alright, see if it works properly this time. There she goes. Lag and all. And it's time we left two sticks behind, so we've only got ten going through, because I shortened that, because one of my repeaters was missing, and I don't know why or how that happened, but it was. And I replaced it with a rock. But ten might be enough anyway. We'll have to see just how much grows in the time it takes to go through ten. And I couldn't figure out, like, for the life of me, why that minecart didn't pick up those things. Unless... Unless it's getting full, in which case, that could be it. Didn't think about that. If it's filling up, I mean, there shouldn't be enough reeds to fully fill the minecart, because each side has only two stacks. Come to think of it, even if it collected from both sides, that should only be four stacks. So that doesn't really explain how the minecart would get full, or so full in the first place. But, nothing got stuck up there this time, that's good. Technically there are four stacks of reeds that get harvested in this lane. So if it collected a lot of those, like if they all managed to bounce to one side, and that minecart picked up most of them, it could get full, I guess. And then a few. But that's just insane, they would, like, I, you wouldn't think that would happen very often. Like, like it, it's mostly random that does it, right? That, right? E even if it doesn't happen often, it happened the last time. I mean, I'm guessing that's what happened. Anyway, we saw this seems to be working. We only got ten things behind. I will have to wait and see whether how enough that's grown in, in ten things is enough. But it doesn't really matter if it's not. If it harvests a bit more often than you need, because the more the merrier. Really. Ah yes, that thing up there, the, the AFK platform for the, the slime farm, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's too high up. I think what's happening is the slimes despawn before they get there. The rates are just terrible. You're better off doing it on the ground. So the idea wasn't a good one. So I will at some point tear that down, but I couldn't be bothered right now. And it's also a good example of that elevator. so I will keep it up there probably until I've, I've built the other one where we want it. And also, with harvesting more often, that means you're more likely to have more reeds that have only grown, grown one and not to full height, which isn't a problem because they're gonna, like, you may as well harvest them then anyway, you don't get as many as if you wait, but if you harvest them anyway, like, you're not gonna 
for example, get less reeds out of it if you harvest them more often. Except for the off chance that a reed tries to grow whilst the harvester is right on the top of it, it won't. It's, it's not going to actually affect the amount of reeds you get at a time. But if they're not grown to full height, there might be fewer that bounce over the top, I'd expect. So, yeah. Yeah, you know how I made that circuit in there to make sure with the water drippy things that that couldn't happen? Somehow it happened. Arrows aren't even rendering that far down. So I can't even see if I'm getting close. Should point out, because you probably can't see, that right down there, if you look there, and I'll get in the corner of my screen so it looks a bit bigger, that's armor. You probably still can't see. Hang on a sec. Let's... Zoom mode. I don't think I'll likely actually hit him at all. In fact, I think it's dropping way short. But I at least want it to land near him so that he can go like, what? What the heck is that? Don't know if it's possible. Did he go down? No. Again, the map is helpful. <laughs> uh, I think he just popped out of, right out of render range or something. Pretty sure that's falling way too short. But I can't see where it's landing. Like when he goes past the edge there, he goes just out of render distance or something like that. If only. Wow. <laughs> Who uses this FOV anyway? If only I had the Skyworm finished though, I could drive it out so I was horizontally level with him on one axis and I'd be closer. That would be fun. Oh, I think he's over there. I can see the see that hole filling itself in. Need to wait for him to come a bit closer. Then maybe I'll shout at him. Yeah, he's over there. Filling in that hole. Like, I don't even have any idea where they're landing. Are they getting close? Are like, they way back here? Like, that is a long way away. Long way away. Wait a minute. Looks like he's got an arrow sticking in him, I think. Or is that just his tool? I don't think I hit him though. He might have been he might be fighting skeletons or something down there. In fact, it kinda of looks like he is. There might be mobs down there, but they're not rendering because they're too far away. Although he's digging right now. Maybe that's what he was doing, but you know, he could have been like fighting skeletons before. I mean, there were always creepers, holes, and yeah. I think he saw me and waved. I don't actually have an outro clip, so let's do that. So uh, I've utilized some of my name tags. Here, here, look at this. I've got five name tags and then some more. So I've, I've named Vertigo because obvious reasons. Actually, at first, first I named him and or her Vertigo with, with an E-Y at the end, but then I decided Vertigo sounds better. So I used two name tags to name him and or her. Verta does sound more like a... a, a female sort of name, doesn't it? But maybe that's just Latin, and it's not a Latin name, I don't know. Um, anyway, I was doing an outro clip, so 
hopefully next episode we'll be able to start work on the sky worm itself i've been just preparing the official documentation and blueprints well the blueprints the official documentation is more in my head i don't really need to write that down but the blueprints will help me to build it without having to refer back to my test world so that should be exciting and let's see if oh this donkey's grown up how many hearts have we got here only one same as the parent i bred this one and my other one i need to name these guys haven't quite figured out what to name the donkeys. I'm going to need several donkeys on the Skyworm itself. So, I think six when it's finished, up to its full size. And I need to think up names for all of them. Because A, it'll help with sorting, and like so it's easy to figure out which chest you want to open. And B, it's, it's cool. Um, so, let's try breeding another one. And then I'll get on with that outro I was going to do. But, but yes, I'll frantically assemble these clips together from everywhere, or assuming you've just watched that I have just frantically assembled, assembled all these clips together from everywhere, because they're not in chronological order. It went a bit weirdly. Oh, wait. You can't breed them when they're not came, can you? Darn, 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 darn. I just wasted a golden carrot. Possibly two, if I can't get one into thing I before. Ah. Uh, uh, great. They still eat them, but you can't breed them. Okay, he's still in love. Hopefully. Yay, a few. Crisis averted. Um, I don't know if I want to have some more pens up here for organizing. Anyway, that's irrelevant. The point is, hopefully next episode we'll get to work on the Skyworm. We now have reads. I've got loads of name tags. Um, I have thoughts of maybe... If I want to get more sources of emeralds, building a melon slash pumpkin farm next to the reed farm with a similar design, but that's not urgent. Next episode, the Skyworm. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I need a better outro, or a new outro, something to outro. Anyway, I can't, can't complain about outros all the time, because I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember if there's anything else I need to tell you. But if there is, I'll add another clip and splice it in before this one. Ha ha ha. Goodbye. Whee! Oops. I missed.